For the most part, Squarespace is fairly intuitive, especially since the new upgrade to the Fluid Engine earlier in 2022, this has become even easier again. One area where we could say that this may not be the case is with blogging. Today, I'm gonna to take you through some tips that I've picked up and memorized over five, six, seven years of working with Squarespace, and these will help you along your way. And I've picked the Pixelate Academy admin area just to show this example, and we've got quite a few blog posts on here already. So let's have a look at some of the more recent blog posts that we've added in. So if I click on this title here, we can see there's a lot of standard features in our blog post. We've also got good length, and we've got some additional features like about the author. We've also got a sidebar plugin, which I will send a link over for you so you can get your mitts on a sidebar plugin should you want to add that feature to your blog post as well. Internet seems to be running a little slow today, but we should be able to get through what we need to. Some of the main things we're looking at here are the blog title. This is crucially important for search engine optimization. There's also, if I can expand, we've got the website URL. This will switch from .squarespace.com to whatever your domain name is when your website goes live. It'll be forward slash something like blog. It depends on what you call it. So we've gone with blog, but it could be news or announcements. And then you've got the blog title itself. This blog post is all about image wrap and text wrap. Ideally, we'd have master image wrap and master text wrap, but that would be way too wordy. So we've had to make a decision to go with text wrap. So that's for SEO. That's to make sure that our blog post that we spent many hours to create is actually going to be found on search engines. This is a post that's been updated once or twice with one of the more recent YouTube videos, which is one of our better performing videos at the moment because it's on a blog post that's been around for a while and this gets quite a bit of traction. Then some of the other things, I usually have the date in there. I haven't put the year in because a lot of the articles we've written 12 months ago are still valid now. If I put it an individual date in, that could cause problems. Another thing that I've changed is that in Squarespace, it'll often add in the date into the URL string here. We as Pixel Haze don't want to do that because what that does is it instantly date stamps and then dates our blog post. So if what we're creating was more in line with BBC News and it's specific to an individual date, which a lot of our content isn't, then what that's telling Google is that this post is going to be out of date very, very soon. And we don't want to do that because lots of our content is what we call evergreen in that it will be valid for a number of years in many cases. I always try and add a video into our blog post because we have a very active YouTube channel, which we're posting weekly, if not two to three times a week, new content to that channel. So by bringing that to the fore on our website, that's really important to us. Then we use different headings. So we start off with a heading one for our title. It'll take care of that for you automatically. Same for the formatting for the date. Then we go into a heading two to kind of ease us into the, the article with a subheading. Then we have our paragraph content, which we use some formatting. Sometimes we'll use lines to divide up sections. We've got another YouTube video, which is a slightly older one, but it's still valid now and has good traction. We've got a step one, two, three screen captures from the diagram. We've then put in an advert to our Squarespace Box of Tricks course. This is the call to action for our blog post in terms of if you like what you see, this is an option for you. And then we've got the about the author. Finally, finishing up with another plugin, which will I'll send a link through so you can access. That allows us to put in automatic related posts. So you may be saying, well, that's all well and good, but how do I get all of these things in place? Finally, then we've got the two final sections, our tags, and then be able to link to the next and previous article. These are all really good when combined for SEO, because even on this page, which is a separate blog post, we've got things like Squarespace image styles, learn Squarespace, Squarespace course for an article that's not even focused on on this page. 
So having that keyword density, having lots of keywords in on our blog post is really important. We don't want to overdo it and it's about finding a balance. Also, Squarespace will prioritize main headings, our URL string, our browser title, which sits up in here, which is the same as this title unless you manually change it afterwards. Making sure we get our main keyword in place in those areas is really important. But then to be able to add in keywords like Squarespace and increase the keyword density through content afterwards is really important. If every other word was Squarespace, then there's every chance that Google will see that you're overdoing it and could even penalize you for it. So it's about making sure it's prominent without going over the top. Does the content flow? Is it easy to read? If so, then you should be absolutely fine. Okay. So that's how we tend to format blog posts. Let's have a look at adding a new blog post in and showing where all these areas relate to in the admin area. Let's click on this plus icon here. First up, we can add in our post title. Now, obviously we're looking at much longer title than that. Dearly 56 to 70 characters, something like that. We want it to be detailed, but not a paragraph in itself. What will happen is if your titles are too long, it'll probably be truncated on Google. So Google will only recognize the first X number of characters. And I think the golden rule is around the 56 characters. So I'm just going to put some dummy text in there. We've got our standard Squarespace editor for that text area. Now, if you've been used to using the new Fluid Engine, you'll also notice that this isn't available for blog posts. At the moment, we're still working with the classic editor for Squarespace 7.1. So that means that we've got these blue ovals with the white crosses, and then we've got this building block approach to create in our page content. So we can add features in, we can then move and drag them, and you'll find I've got loads of tutorials showing how you can use this particular editor. We won't be covering how to install the plugins today, but I will send you a link. This gives you an idea of how we can structure the page. I'm going to save it. I'm not going to publish it at this stage or schedule it because this post is nonsense. So I'm going to press save here. And the one thing I haven't shown you, which is really important to make sure we get this article appearing correctly, is how to show the content that doesn't appear on the detail page, on the actual post page itself when you click through to it. So to access that information, we can click on these three dots here next to the post once you've created it and then go to settings. At this stage, we've got this pop-up window. So we've got the option here to add an image or search for images. So we can use a stock image. Let's just pick this one. Then we've got the option to put an excerpt in. This is your short summary that appears below the blog title on the blog listing page or via a summary block. And I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. We've then got the post URL. So you can change it, but the one thing you find if you use the space bar, it doesn't work. So we have to use hyphens. Here we would use our keywords. We'd need to make sure that that URL is really descriptive. One thing that's really important, if you duplicate a blog post, which I'll show you how to do in a moment, we need to change that post URL. Otherwise, what it will be is the previous blog post with a series of random alphanumerical characters at the end. And that's not going to be referencing the new post. When we duplicate a post, which is available via this option here, we then need to go into that new post and change that post URL to something more applicable. Okay, so that's all of the main features. If I go to options, we can now add tags. And then we can put our keywords in. So this would be referencing our existing keywords that we've already got in our blog post. 
and making sure that they're in there. Not only will it appear at the bottom of the page, but if we also add in tags and categories, that plugin that will show related articles will kick into gear and it will know which articles to relate to. So that's really important if you have those plugins installed. I'll probably create a standalone video on those plugins showing how to install them and how they work. So that's the two main options. We've got the SEO section, but if you do everything else right in terms of the post title and the initial description, you probably don't even need to worry about this. But if you feel that you need to change the title as it appears on a Google search engine results page, or the same with a description, you can go nuts and, and tweak them, fine tune them here for that purpose. I'm not going to show anything else in this case because otherwise we can just bombard you with too much information. But here are some of the things that I look at when creating new blog posts. If I go to settings here, we can see this is already populated. We've got our custom thumbnail. We've then got a short but punchy excerpt. And actually, we can see there's an example here that I haven't been doing what I've been telling you to do. I must have saved a draft without naming it. So we need to change that random blog title. So again, put hyphens in between. I'm going to have to go back through a few other posts more recently now to see if this has happened as well. One thing to note, if you manually link to this blog post section from somewhere, then that will mean you'll have to relink it. So if you created a button and linked to an individual blog post by copying the URL at the top, you'll need to go and redo that. But if I press save now, we've updated that post as well. So if we go to the home page, final bit, we can see now that not only is that thumbnail, the, the article title here, the first section or that excerpt option is below. We've then got the option to read more, which it automatically adds when we add a new post. Likewise, the date is showing the year in this case as well. We could take it so it doesn't show the date on this summary page at all, but because we post regularly, it's actually an advantage for us to do that. Okay, so that means that we've got everything in place now. Now I've changed the URL. So if I hover over the read more button, we can see in the bottom left hand corner, it gives us an idea of the name of that page that it links to. And this is a summary block that we've added to our home page. So it automatically populates on the home page. If I was to put this one to live, it would slot into place. I won't do that because that article is nonsense. And then the link will automatically update going through to the full detailed article. So those are just a few tips that I use regularly when adding blog posts to my Squarespace websites. It'd be great to have your thoughts. So leave a comment in the section below if there's something you feel I've missed that's important, or if you've got your own little tip that you'd be happy to share with the community. Catch you next time.